lifelong scholar, writer, documentarian, traveler, and teacher, I have come to know many unforgettable people. Some I've known for a long time, and others I've more recently been led to discover. They have one thing in common. Their work and achievements are generally considered outside of the mainstream, which is why you may be unfamiliar with their transformational messages and products. My mission is to bring them to you so they can reach out to you and share their gifts with you as you strive for more perfect health, abundance, joy, wisdom, and a deeper understanding of life's great questions. Hello, friends. Welcome to my Alternative Wisdom Summit. I'm your host, Pamela Davis. And I am an investigative transformationalist, which may be a new term to some of you or all of you, I hope. But what it simply means is that I'm always on the lookout for information and fabulous input to help you change your lives for the better. I was born with a ferocious curiosity, and at a very young age I began pursuing what you might call uncommon interests. I've devoted much of my life to the exploration of great wonders and mysteries, and I've been fortunate to be able to work on amazing projects around the world, projects like psychic archaeology in Egypt, and uh, consciousness studies in many, many places, and research into life after death. And I've seen the exciting transformation that can follow when doors of understanding open up in our lives. I've actually experienced this excitement in my life. And time and again, I've witnessed transformation in the lives of others, which is why I'm here with you today, inviting you to step through one of those doors with me right now. However, before we get started, there are two items of procedure or business that we need to cover. Now, item one. First, in order for you to get full benefit of this interview, please browse to Al Perhack's page. And you do that by typing into your browser address bar www.alternativewisdomsummit.com forward slash mindforce, M I N D F O R C E. And you'll know you're on the right screen when you see the photo of our guest, Al Perhacks. There are multiple things you can do on this page, but right now all I want you to do is locate the box for audience, audience comments. And it says, say something and type in the geographical location where you're viewing from. Then if you hear some little gem in this upcoming interview that you really like, and I'm sure you're going to hear a lot of those, and you want to share your thoughts with others, we'd love to hear from you. Also, if you have questions about Qi or Mind Force or something else in the interview, this is where you can submit questions. And now our item number two, Al will be giving you a free thank you gift for being on this interview with us. And Al will tell you more about this in just a moment. But first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about him. Sifu Al Perhax is the author, creator, and visionary behind the Mind Force Quantum Qigong system. This esoteric system is comprised of many different unique and essential skills for total mind, body, spirit development. Sifu Perhax has been training in both the martial and mind arts for over 20 years and has successfully trained thousands in these powerful methods. He is the visionary and creator of the Mind Force method of esoteric training and has studied and holds black belts in several martial arts styles. So, Al, welcome to the Alternative Wisdom Summit. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's good to be here. Well, it's great to have you. You know, in, in your fascinating career, uh, you began your, your career in martial arts. And I, I'd, I'd like to know what led you to go on from there. And to, well, why didn't you just stop there? What led you to go into the deep exploration of the mind and spirit? Well, I think I've always had an interest in the mind. When I was a, a young man, maybe around 17 or 18, my dad gave me the the uh, audio cassette, "The Strangest Secret" by Earl Nightingale, uh, which is kind of uh, you know one of the top downloaded. Uh, you know, 
trainings of all time. It was in night. Obviously, Earl Nightingale was was started Nightingale Conant, and so from there, I really started to take a look at different types of uh, training uh, for the mind. At that time, I was not as much involved in the martial arts. As I got involved in the martial arts, I was doing the martial arts purely from the standpoint of fighting, self-defense, and things of that nature. However, in the martial arts, there's there's two different, let's say. Uh, sections of martial arts. One is called external, which is purely the fighting aspect of the martial arts. And then the other side is the internal martial arts, which is more of the spiritual, uh, energetic side of the martial arts. And so as I got involved in the external, I slowly migrated into the internal uh, aspect of the martial arts. And that's really what opened my mind up to the, this in entire aspect of mind force quantum qigong and all the things we're going to talk about today. Oh, that's great. I'm so glad that you that you made that choice. <laughs> that's great. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> I want to begin by clarifying a few terms or concepts connected sure. with your work. Mm -hmm. um, now, number first of all, you're called Sifu Al Perhex. I don't imagine everybody knows what that is. What is a Sifu? Uh, it just really is instructor or teacher in Chinese. And uh, since I'm an instructor, I, I use that um, as, you know, just like you would use si uh, sensei or teacher or instructor. Sifu would be the similar type of... of uh, okay. Uh, All right. Now we figured that out. And then um, chi, of course, is a word that is becoming more common in our you know, everyday parlance, but again, not everybody understands what that is. Do you want to tell us a little bit about qi and uh, and then what is qigong? Sure. Uh, qi is uh, is energy. Very simply put, uh, it is like you know, life force energy. There's so many different names for it: energy, life force, prana, mana. Uh, there's you know, like I said, and that's really what uh, qi is. Qigong is if you break the word down, qi, um, qigong, by the way, can be spelled several different ways. It could be spelled C-H-I, it could be spelled K-I, K-I would be the way the Japanese and Koreans uh, use the word qi. Uh, Chinese usually use qi, C-H-I, or uh, they use Q-I, it's all the same, but in uh, my spelling of quantum qigong, qigong, qi, Q-I, G-O-N-G. So Qi is the energy and Gong is work. So it's energy work. That's what it breaks down to. Oh, great. I, I didn't know that either. Yes. All right. So now the, the, the title of our talk today, our interview, is Mind Force Quantum Qigong System. So what does Mind Force mean to you? Mind Force means to me is your ability to be able to use your, your mind in a way that is, let's say, uh, extraordinary over your the normal uses of your mind. So, in other words, being able to use it um, in a stronger capacity than what would normally be thought of for the mind. That's how I interpret mind force. Uh, as I developed, you know, that system is really designed so that when you're using your mind force, it's something special. It's not just using your mind for thinking or calculations or or doing nothing. It's really a very, very focused type of intention. Okay, that's good. Well, I'm so excited to to have you on the show today because having you really fits in with what I'm what I'm trying to do with this series, which is all about empowerment. I see the empowerment of the people as being absolutely essential if we're going to transform our world to achieve universal justice, abundance, and harmony. And the power elite who control our institutions are totally invested in keeping us as powerless as possible. And they're supremely skilled at manipulating us, especially through fear. So tell us how can practicing your techniques empower people? Well, you know, one of the things that I teach in almost every, every course of instruction that I do is really teaching someone how to become a controller. And when I say that, I mean a controller of themselves. And and just like you said, uh, you know, we're always being controlled or trying to be controlled by those powers that be out there. And so by using mind force and quantum qigong, 
you can get better control of yourself uh, both physically, mentally, and spiritually, and that's really the goal of, of what I'm teaching. So when you're telling, when you're, you're, you're encouraging people to learn to be controllers, you're not necessarily uh, emphasizing them becoming control freaks over other people, right? Right, exactly. I mean, it, that is a part of it, though, because anytime you have uh, a control factor and you learn control over yourself, you ultimately can learn to control others. And that is the double-edged sword of what I teach in that it is esoteric, and uh, it can cut both ways. It can be used for uh, both good and bad. But that is the that is the yin and yang, or yin and yang, of of almost everything that you learn. It's it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like a gun. A gun can be used to protect your family. Uh, that same gun could be taken by somebody and be used to harm someone uh, in in a totally different way. Well, yeah, it's like an automobile. You can right. drive it every day to get where you need to go, or you can go crazy and run into a crowd right. of, you know, passers-by or something. Right. Correct. That doesn't mean we shouldn't have automobiles. Right. Yeah. All right, so in, in your material it says that we need to stop setting goals and start being able to, to achieve them. Mm -hmm. So how do, how do you help people to do that? I think it all comes back to breaking down that concept of, of goal, what I call goal getting versus goal setting and really understanding that, that you really have the capacity to, to do anything that you desire in your life and really what it comes down to is we will usually achieve our greatest desires. If it's something we really desire, we will attain it and so part of my training is to teach somebody to get their mind focused so that they can line their mind up to be in alignment with those goals and things that they want. And that can be as simple as setting a very simple goal or it could be something a little bit more advanced such as using uh, the law of attraction. And I kind of smile when I say that because it's, it's a word that's been used so often in the last number of years as a catch-all for a lot of different things. But I really do believe that when you create um, your mind power, your mind force, when you create a physical energy that's positive and attracting, then you're going to be able to attract those things that you desire in your life. And it's it's more than just the thought process. It's really, it is, it is physical, it's spiritual, and it's mental all together. And to me, that's a kind of a tri what I call a triad in the sense that you have all three of those units working in unison to get you a result. Isn't that something that you go into in your magneto, uh, your magneto program? Yes, that is correct. Uh, how did you get? I mean, of course, I I hate to admit that I really get a kick out of the X Men, and so of course, <laughs> Magneto makes me think right away of Ian McKellen. And <laughs> right, 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 exactly. You know, is I'm sure that had nothing to do with your naming it that, or maybe it did. Why don't you? Tell me. It literally had nothing to do with it, but if you look up with a mag, what a magneto is, is a magneto is is a high-powered magnet, electromagnet that, that can attract things to it very quickly, and so that's where I came up with that concept of of magneto, and and in fact I I really created almost almost every course and study and boot camp that I've created. I really created it for myself first, which means as I was going through these different studies, I would take really good notes and then I would write them up and then I would use those techniques for myself. So almost everything that I do is really something that I've tested on myself and my close students first and they were really beneficial to me. So I I knew that if they would be beneficial to me, they would be beneficial to others as well. Well, I know you you put a tremendous amount of time and, and dedication into this. I I heard in one of your uh, one of your presentations how you you started getting up at you were still working a job and you got up at four o'clock in the morning or something to do your practice because in the evenings you had you felt you needed to be with your family, which is nice. So I know you put a lot of work into this. Yeah, it's um you know when I started doing the the martial arts and the qigong I I knew that I needed to invest some time in it 
And of course, the mornings were the time to do that. I had at the time three or four kids. I think I think I had three and one on the way. And so the morning time was the time where I could actually do it. Uh, I had to get up early so that I would be the only one up, and I could take care of my uh, my workout. And then at night, if I got a workout in, it was a kind of a bonus. But yeah, that that's that's what I did in order to uh, to get good at what I was doing. Well, oh, that's real dedication. And uh, about about that, you know, it's the skills or methods that you teach, if practiced enough, can enable people to be clairvoyant, telepathic, able to achieve astral projection, out of body experiences, remote viewing, and and more. And obviously, such abilities are intriguing mm -hmm. and seductive, but some of them, like astral projection, I, I know can also be quite dangerous. So what is your approach in teaching these skills? Well, I, I don't look at them as that dangerous due to the fact, I mean, I guess the concept always comes back to this triad that I mentioned, uh, which is the, the mind-body-spirit. You hear everybody talk about the mind-body-spirit. You see it on ads. You see it all over the internet. But I really take it to heart in the sense that I'm teaching these really physical, these really real concepts, a, con a real concept of the mind, a real concept of the physical body being able to actually do things and change. I'm talking about the spirit from a perspective where you really believe and you really not only believe but you know that you're a spirit and that your body is just a vessel for that spirit and that once the body's gone that, that your spirit's going to go elsewhere. Uh, using that as a, a kind of a structure to start with is that I believe and I experience it and, and others that I've taught and others that I associate with have experienced it is that your spirit usually will leave your body on a nightly basis. Uh, you know, you don't remember it a lot of times because you got to remember your body, mind and spirit are working together and your body uh, is going to do everything that it can to keep your spirit in because, uh, you know, it is a little bit scary for your body to release the spirit because, you know, if the spirit you know, leaving the body, it's a, um, it's a strange type of situation. But I think everyone on this call has probably experienced that feeling of falling while they're sleeping, you know, like uh, they're in a dream oh, and they're yes. falling. Yes. Well, a lot of times that could be construed as your, your spirit falling back into your body after it's been out. And uh, I, what I teach individuals to do is to create sensitivity inside of the body, mind, and spirit so that and I believe everybody has these, these sensitivities in their body. It's just a matter of awakening them. And once you awaken those sensitivities, you can achieve and, and get varying degrees of the things that you mentioned, like uh, clairvoyance, uh, astral projection, uh, healing abilities, you know, these types of things. And it really comes down to, to sensitivity, is creating that sensitivity within your body, your mind, your spirit. Well, I, I know you've got some fabulous and interesting techniques that you've described, and 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 uh, and friends, I'll tell you, he's gone into a lot of detail about how to do these things. It's not like a quick one silver that leaves you really asking more questions. On wait a minute, how do I really do this? I think that he's he's done a wonderful job in explaining how to do so many of these really cool things that. I think in our dreams we we've we've wished we could do for a long time. Um, what about you know what what kinds of people can anybody do this or or what might limitations what what limitations might there be for people? That's a, that's a really good question, and I get it's a question I get a lot. But I've trained people from. Uh, you know, preteens all the way up to individuals in their 70s or 80s. Uh, I would say the only limitations really is your belief factor, number one. And number two is, you know, probably your willingness to learn and put in, in the time. Now, let me, let me clarify a couple things. Number one, I think anyone can, can uh, learn the mind force techniques because uh, they don't require any kind of physical type of attributes. Um, the spiritual techniques very similar as well. The physical techniques, now if somebody's going to be learning uh, physical techniques, the Qigong techniques, uh, almost everyone that I've 
coached over the years has gotten awesome results from it. The only time that I've ever noticed somebody to not be able to get results from that is if they were grossly overweight uh, and in very, very, very poor health. And so if I speak to somebody on the phone and they tell me, well, you know, I weigh 300 pounds and I'm five feet tall and, you know, I have these different health issues, I would always encourage them and say, listen, I, I really think you need to lose some weight and, and get in a little better shape so you're going to be able to feel the energy better because those are the only times that there's a limitation on that physical energy. However, that same person could learn uh, different types of mind force techniques, lying down meditations, those types of things uh, just as easily. But I think any time you look at any kind of training, uh, the better shape you're in, the better you're going to be mentally, physically, and spiritually anyway. That you makes know, sense. Yeah, it does, of course. And uh, as far as the astral projection is concerned, I, I'm reminded, I, I've done, um, I did quite a bit of work with uh, Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross many years ago, before she died. And I was fascinated to hear her talk about how she would, and of course, you know, she's very famous for her work with, uh, with the dying. She was an expert on death and dying. And she would work with, with the dying, especially cancer victims and people who, who were slowly dying. She would teach them how to leave their body. She would teach them astral projection mm -hmm. so that the concept of their leaving their body became much less frightening to them, where they it, where it became a familiar sensation and a familiar skill that they could step in and out of their bodies. And of course, this is amazing in, in, in letting people really understand that we are not our bodies. You mm -hmm. know, we occupy our bodies like we drive our cars, but right. we're not our bodies. And she was, of course, she was a force of nature, you know. Sure. So, in one of your programs, you talk about how important it is to be able to control fear. <laughs> and if I understand it correctly, I think I think what you said was that to control fear, you have to control the mind, and you control the mind through action. Mm -hmm. Action controls fear. I hope I got that right. So, right. talk about controlling fear. Right. That's correct. Uh, most of the fears that we have, number one, are usually things that are not really fears at all. A real fear is something, let's say, if somebody were to come at you with, let's say, a loaded gun or a, a wild animal, let's say a bear was you know, coming after you or you were in the water and a shark, that's real fear because your life is uh, you know, very seriously threatened. The fears that most people go through are really imaginary fears when you think about it. Let's say uh, fear, a lot of people have a fear of failure, they have a fear of of not being as successful, they have a fear of, like a lot of times people have fears of loss, uh, for instance, fear of losing their spouse, fear of losing their their job, fear of losing their money, fear of losing, you know, and, and when you really break that down, it's an imagination, it's not real, because now if you lost your job, that could be a fear because you you lost it, okay, however, when I say action controls or cures fear, it does because what it does is it replaces. You can only have a, you know one thought, really good thought in your mind at a time. So if you are fearful and that's what you're focused on, right, then that's what you're going to be focused on. Whereas you may still have a little bit of fear in you, but if you put action behind it. So let's say in a, in a case somebody loses their job and they're fearful. Oh my, I lost my job. I, I need to make money. What's going to cure that? It's going to take action. And that means whatever whatever profession they're in is is going out there and getting busy, and going out there and and getting the job done. And I've noticed that when people do that, they get results. And when you get results, then it starts to dissipate that fear, and it starts to get you accustomed to the fact that you can change your mind. And that's a very simplistic way to look at it. However, that's how simple it is. Is that most of the fears we have are just totally, they're, they're not real. Uh, I heard one person say, fear is false evidence appearing w real. And that's really what a fear is. Most of the fears we have are just, they're, they're not even close to being a reality. And yet, we can, we can work ourselves, and, and think about this too, we can work ourselves into a frenzy of fear, worrying about things 
that may never ever happen and so the key is to to train your mind so that when that fear does pop in your mind and everybody's everybody's afraid at some point everybody has fears let's face it it's but it's knowing that when you do get that impulse of fear that you know how to d redirect it through an activity or an action that will cause you to to get away from that uh, okay um, <clears throat> I do know that th I don't know there's a very high percentage maybe as much as 90 percent of the things of the fears that we conjure up in our minds are they're just illusion they they're, mm -hmm. they're things that don't ever really happen so we fear a lot of things that don't happen yeah um, but when when we do have you know really nagging fear or um, something that feels like real fear mm -hmm. um, what are some of the disciplines that that, could, that aside from just getting up and going out and trying to do right. something where you you may not be able to think I don't know what to do <laughs> you know yeah. I mean what are some of the disciplines that that could that w that we could turn to to help control the mind get it to calm down get it to focus mm -hmm. on something constructive I think everything comes down to questioning yourself anytime you question yourself it requires an answer and this is uh, you know asking questions of yourself asking questions of others is really one of the most important skills you can ever have in your life and that's because that whenever someone asks you a question just like you're asking me questions I now have to provide an answer for you whether that answer is the answer you're looking for or whatever I still have to answer it and so if you have a fear uh, give me a fear that 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 you might uh, and I'll kind of tell you how I would handle that. Go ahead, tell me, uh, give me a fear. Oh Lord, this is um, this is something that I that has just cropped up for me in about the last year, mm -hmm. and I have developed almost a phobic fear fear of falling downstairs, and and I have no reason in my own life to fear this. I'm wondering if it, I, when I was a little girl, about eight years old, I saw my beloved grandmother fall downstairs right in front of me and break her leg. And I'm wondering if this is something that's sort of recycled, you know, and come up in my mind, or I have no idea. I really don't. And it bothers the devil out of me, and I would really rather not have that fear. So tell me, Sifu, right. what, what do I do about this? Again, I, I think it's really delving into that. So you had an issue with your grandmother years ago, and uh, you experienced that, and, and for whatever reason it's coming back at you now. I would ask myself the questions, why, why am I afraid of falling down the stairs? Am, do I feel less physically capable than I was you know, last week before I was thinking about this? Do I feel less mentally capable? What is it about this fear? What, what is it that's causing me to, to have this fear? And, you know, it's almost like being self-analytical in the sense that you're asking yourself for the questions. Because I believe, in fact, that our minds are so powerful that it will give us the answers. Now, it may not give us the answers uh, directly, like, inside of our mind, but it may give us the answers from somebody else. Like, you might talk to somebody else and, and they give you some tidbit of information that allows you to solve that, that issue. But what I would do in your case is I would go to the top of the staircase and look down and say, you know, and see how you feel. Really feel that situation. What do, what do you feel like? Do you feel afraid? Do you feel hesitant? You know, what is it? Do you feel like you're going to trip? Do you, do you feel like it's going to be uh, an accident? Uh, you're carrying too many things? You know, you kind of break everything down into its smallest piece and then take those little pieces and try to remove them one at a time. I mean, that's the simplest way to do it. Uh, not doesn't always work that way, but that's how I would take a look at it, whatever the fear is. And in your case, that's what I would do. I would go down on a big set of stairs and say, what am I afraid about? Now, it's funny that you mention that, but uh, we have stairs in my house. We have a porch going to, to my office, and to I have an apartment up, up top where my kids stay. And the, the 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 way the stairs were built is they're they're made with really nice wood, but it's really uh, 
it's kind of shiny and slippery. And last year in the ice, uh, there was ice on the stairs, and I walked down the stairs, and I fell down the stairs. And I had a bruise on my butt like that big and cuts on my arms. Oh. And so, you know, it was pretty painful. And I will say this, is that every time I go down those stairs now, I take it one step at a time very easily, whether there's ice on there or not, because it's a recognition in my mind that I wasn't careful that one time and that I slipped and fell. Uh, am I afraid to go down those stairs? Not necessarily. However, there's a recognition every time I go down them that that happened, and it was, it was a painful situation. So uh, I understand. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I also know too. There's there is an odd phenomenon, and I don't know if that's operational in this situation. But sometimes in our lives, when we approach the age when in a past life we had a really bad accident, or maybe you know, maybe I don't, maybe I died in a lifetime falling downstairs at approximately the age that I am now. Right. Sometimes this comes back as you're approaching the age and then once you pass that age suddenly you think well, what was I worried about you know it's it's gone because it doesn't happen now it's just some kind of weird recycled remembrance of a past incident that seems real now but isn't have right. you ever looked into that I do in fact one of the things that I teach is uh, learning how to not think about age and not getting old and I you know I've done plenty of seminars on this and and a lot of the methods I teach are designed to keep you young and and youthful and I'm, I just turned 50 this year and I don't feel 50 and uh, I feel very strong just as strong as I did when I was 25 so you know, but one of the things I teach people is that we've been mentally trained our entire lives for everybody that we know is this process of getting old. And it's really just um, it's a contrived thing based on time in the sense that if there were no time, you would not have a measurement. You wouldn't know that you were 25 or, or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 70. And so you wouldn't regard that as a significant situation. There are some people, as they get older, their expectations change based on their age, regardless of how they feel or how they look, and they, they kind of drop into what is they feel expected of them. For instance, when a lot of times people get to 40 years old, they say, oh, I'm middle-aged now. Well, who's, who determined that, that you're middle-aged? You know, It's kind of a negative connotation. And so these are little mental things that happen to us as we get older. Uh, as, as we grow up, I mean, we hear it from everybody. Our conditioning, I heard uh, a friend of mine said one time that we've been trained by 20,000 meals with the wrong people. And what he says is, uh, by saying 20,000 meals with the wrong people, is that oftentimes living inside of our families, uh, even though our families love us and they, and they mean the best for us, they may not be distilling the, the exact right advice, but by sitting at that dinner table every single night, we're hearing a lot of negativity that's going on and it affects us and as we get older get in our 20s and 30s uh, 40s we start to reflect back on those things that people have told us all those years and so what happens is is that we have this perception of what we should be at a certain age and what I try to tell people is that that's totally irrelevant it's really based on how you feel and how you want to feel uh, there's there's no qualification for your age other than that number that you have based on the year that you were born and it's really a mental attitude because I've met people that are 40 or 50 uh, I've met some that are 40 that act like they're 60 and I've met some that are 50 that act like they're 30 and, and you wouldn't even know the difference so uh, I don't know if this answered your question or not but it kinda just uh, uh, woke up something in my head to reference the standpoint that you can go back into your mind and you can rearrange how you feel about certain things. Now, uh, did you get that from uh, you know a past life uh, reference? It's quite possible. Well, that yeah, getting back to that, I mean, in in what I was referring to, really doesn't have anything to do with age. When my brother, uh, when we were both teenagers, and my brother was approaching the age of seventeen, 
Um, and he 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 was a very quiet boy. He didn't do wild, crazy things, and didn't have bad friends. But for a number of months, I became more and more and more obsessed with with a fear that something was going to happen to him and it was completely irrational right and I was terrified that I was going to lose my brother that something was going to happen to him and then months passed and he was fine and nothing happened and then rather quickly that that whole pattern of fear just disappeared and I learned years later with a lot of of uh, past life regression that he and I had been brother and sister in a previous lifetime and he had been murdered at the age of 17 so that that was the kind of thing uh -huh. that I was talking about but you know Dr. Mario Martinez whom, whom you may be familiar with is is a fantastic expert on aging and he agrees with you and he says and I love this he says do not he said when people ask me how old I am I say my age is none of my business <laughs> you know? because he said no matter what you say if you say that let's say that you're 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 50 and you look you look great and you say that you're 50 people are gonna say oh you really look you look great as if like you weren't supposed to look as great as you do right. or yeah. the other thing they can think of is um, or if you're not looking so great, you know, they'll say, oh, you know, well, well, you don't look so good. You know? right. <laughs> so, right. No matter what you say, it's really not going to work for you. So the, right. best, the best thing is to just stay away from the whole issue because right. there is no, I mean, what is age anyway? There are people that his specialty is studying centenarians, you know, oh, great. strong. So, yeah. yeah. You know, these, these these techniques of yours, I know, are going to be great for people. Now, I have to break away with you for a moment. Okay. Talk to our friends who are watching. And for those who joined in late, I'll repeat what I said earlier. If you aren't already on Elle's page, then you need to go there now. And in the address bar of your uh, web browser, you type in this address. It's www.alternativewisdom.com. Uh, forward slash mind force m-i-n-d-f-o-r-c-e and you'll know you're on the right page when you see the photo of our guest Al Perhax. Now friends Al has a free gift especially for you as a thank you for watching us here today on this interview. Al your free gift is called Quantum Qigong Alchemy and I just love that. I mean, Give me the word alchemy and I'm there. And this video an mp3 and a pdf and also with it comes uh, a pdf called the pathway manifesto great again a great title you're really good with titles thank you <laughs> in a sentence or two could you please describe for our listeners what they're getting today in your quantum qigong alchemy and the pathway manifesto thank you gift sure what the uh the quantum qigong alchemy video really goes into it's a force, first part of, of a two-part series. Uh, the second part is, is one that I've used for my uh, private coaching clients. And really what it does is it, it, it goes into the concept of when, when I teach somebody quantum qigong, it's a really physical alchemy in the sense that we're changing the body. We're changing the way your body is going to work. We're going to change the way the nerve fiber system works. We're going to change the way the blood flows. We're going to change that energetic system inside of the body. And I go into a little bit of the concept of that is that just like the alchemists of old who were uh, trying to uh, turn copper into gold, we're going to take your body and we're going to create a better body. We're going to create a better mind. We're going to create I don't know if we can create a better spirit, but we're going to create a recognition of that spirit so that you know that you are, in fact, a spiritual being, which, to me, that should give everyone the ultimate shot in the arm, knowing that you're a spirit and knowing that that you will not die. This is, you know, this spirit is is everlasting, and that's a, such a great concept. Once you really, and almost every religion talks about it, however... How many people really, really, really believe and know that they're a spirit? So anyway, that's what I talk about in the alchemy. Uh, the Pathway Manifesto, I take uh, a concept of different types of training, 
uh, how you can use different types of training uh, within quantum qigong to get the maximum type of effort. I answer a lot of questions in the manifesto in reference to the training, how long it takes, uh, why it works, so on and so forth. It's a very interesting read. Uh, everyone that reads it absolutely loves it and I'm sure you will too. Oh, I've looked at it and it's absolutely great. And and you know, friends, I'll tell you too, a lot of this stuff, you know, not everybody knows how to write. Of course, everybody thinks they know how to write, but not everybody does. <laughs> but this is really well written. The, the written materials that Al offers are marvelous, and they're well written, and they're clear, and they're easy to follow. And I, you're just going to love this. You just, you know, this, and this is free. This is so great. So, Al, thank you for your generosity. This is just, uh, this is just the best. Now, friends, I'll tell you in a few moments how to get your free thank you gift. But while you're on this page, I want you to locate the special offer uh, link or button. And it's in the middle of the page in the box labeled Details. And you click on the special offer button or link at the bottom of the box now. So you look toward the bottom of that box and you click on the link that says Special Offer. And you'll know that you're on the right page when you see the words special offer followed by the word uh, the words Al Perhex Mind Force Quantum Qigong System Package. And on this page you can read all about the exclusive special offer that Al has put together especially for you for watching this interview today. And Al, your package is called Al Perhex Mind Force Quantum Qigong System Package. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quite a mouthful. Now, in two or three sentences, please tell our viewers a little bit about what's in your special offer package that you and your team have put together for them. We have put together really uh, a dynamic package. I, I can tell you this right now, and that is you can look online uh, under my, I have many, many websites online, and you will see that these products are for real. They work uh, really well. We've got thousands of people all over the world that have used them over the years, but here's the key, is that I've never offered them at, at this type of pricing ever before. You can look online, and I, I, I can say that a handful of these products right now we sell every day for $497 every single day, and uh, yet you're getting them at an amazing discount and uh, I encourage you to take advantage of it because it's not going to be uh, an offer that's going to be up for all that long and it's something you can get. Uh, don't you know waste your time you know looking elsewhere for it because but well actually do waste your time if you want to go look at it elsewhere you're gonna see that their reality I mean everything that you see on this page is a real product that is sold at that real price that you're seeing it's just that because of the the association that Pamela, Pamela and I have uh, we've been able to put this pricing together for you. So I guess that's the best thing I could say. Well, there's just so much in this package. It's really rich and it covers topics that are of tremendous interest to everybody. So Al, thank you for being so generous and for putting all of that into this amazing offer. So friends, if you'd like to take Al up on his special offer at this exclusive 90% discount, Amazing, 90%. Scroll to the top of the screen and click on the Add to Cart button. The rest is easy. You just fill in the form and click on the Submit Order button. And remember that in a moment I'll be telling you how to claim Al's free thank you gift just for joining us today in this interview. So Al, let's get back to some of these cool topics here. I want to ask you another question. Okay. Um, talking about the importance of the language we use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you recommend, uh, I thought this was really interesting, you recommend expressing affirmations as being, being in the process. For right. example, rather than saying, I am wealthy, which your mind probably won't believe if you're not, right. <laughs> you should say, I am in the process of becoming wealthy. Right. Which, like a brilliant suggestion, but is this just a way of tricking the mind? Why do we, why do, why does this work? Well, just think about it. I mean, just like you said, like if you say, I am wealthy, your mind automatically dismisses it. No, you're not. Okay, I am, uh, you know, 150 pounds when you're actually 250 pounds. Your mind is rejecting it. And even though everyone that teaches affirmations says you should teach it in the affirmative, obviously, it's an affirmation, here's the key. 
is that you can convince your mind otherwise, but why go through that much effort? Anytime you're in the process, your mind automatically accepts it. I'm in the process of weighing 150 pounds. I'm in the process of becoming wealthy. You're, there's no resistance to your mind. Your mind automatically accepts it. And so when you do that, it it removes all those gates, those those walls that are usually up that say, no, you're not. And the biggest reason why people stop doing their affirmations is they become discouraged. They maybe get fearful that they're not going to get them. And they stop. And so they stop saying, I'm in fantastic shape. They stop saying, I'm wealthy. They stop saying, I'm going to find uh, the perfect partner. They stop saying, I'm attracting the job that I desire. Um, because they don't believe it anymore. Whereas in the process is something that can be used at any stage. Even if you're a little down, being in the process is something that, that is just so easy for the mind to accept. And that's why it's so powerful. Everyone that I've spoken to and that I've taught this to have gotten such amazing results because it breaks down all the barriers. And I think when uh, you use it, it's it's just uh, it's almost miraculous. Just those few little words, but it changes so much. Well, I can tell you that um, for years, years ago, I I you know I had read all the stuff and I started doing affirmations like crazy mm -hmm. till I was blue in the face, and finally just gave up because for me affirmations did not work. Mm -hmm. And it took a while to 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 keep, keeping on searching, you know, to find that what you're your problem here is your subconscious mind, which says, "Ah, oh, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in charge of this show. Just forget about it." And so, what I like about your material, L, is that you have, you offer people ways to reach in and work with the subconscious mind, and changing those programs that allow us then to. You know, to tell ourselves that we're in the process of weighing 150 pounds or whatever it is, and using the the techniques to reach the subconscious mind, I think is is really key. At least it was for me. Mm -hmm. Don't you think so? I, I do. Uh, and again, that comes back to the mind force is learning techniques that aren't necessarily so closed door that somebody would say wow that's like a technique from the from the dark arts I mean what I what you just mentioned the using that type of phrase of being in the process is such a simple thing and yet it's so so powerful uh, I teach these types of little techniques that I've used on myself and others that I get the benefit from that are simple to use and they work and that and that's and that's the number one that's my number one criteria for accepting a technique, a process, a concept, a method is does it work and is it something that's that anyone can do and that's really what I attempt to do with every piece of training that I've done is, is when I write something I try to write it at a very simplistic level I want everyone to be able to grasp it I write it for myself like I said that I want to be able to understand that I don't want to make it so involved and so complicated that somebody would go oh my god I, I don't know how I would even understand that I want to make you read it and you go, wow, that that makes sense. And then you immediately apply it because what happens a lot of times, and I call it putting in the flight time, is a lot of times people will get uh, all these techniques from whatever type of, of, of uh, niche or concept and they become overwhelmed because it's like it's just too much. And one of the things that I learned many, many years ago from one of my martial arts instructors was is better to have 10 techniques that work for you than know a thousand techniques that don't work for you. And so the same concept is here is it's better to have some really good techniques that work that you can use all the time than have thousands of these, uh, let's say, what somebody would call an advanced technique that might not serve you. Uh, well, and as I said before, the way that you express uh, and 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 describe how to do these things is really clear. I mean, it, I think anybody can can understand them, and with focus and and practice, and I think that they can they can do these things. Now, um, how about giving us a taste of of uh, of a process, something that you might 
uh, take somebody through. I think there was something I meant to ask you about um, mm -hmm. in your material that you recommend in many places, so something about yin infusion or mm -hmm. something. What, okay, what? yeah. A yin infusion technique. It's a technique designed to uh, infuse the body with energy. Would you like me to go through that a little bit? Oh, that would be great. Okay, excellent. So, we're going to use the concept that the body is a vessel for energy and that you can create that energy. You can create that energy so powerful that you can use it to externalize that energy, uh, whereas you can actually feel it. In fact, there's a, I have a video online uh, mm -hmm. where I, I call it a chi power test where you're testing the chi and you can act, literally feel it between the hands. You could literally build the energy up to the point where you could feel it through a door. You could feel it through a wall. It's very powerful. And really it comes down to combining the mind with the physical body and learning uh, how to infuse your body with this this energy and the, the, the yin. There's two different types of energy, yang energy or some would refer to as yang energy depending upon how you pronounce it, and yin energy. Yang energy or, or yang energy is what's considered more masculine energy. It's it's more of the hardcore energy type of burst that you would get. Uh, it is it's more of a let's say repelling type of energy. That's the yang energy. And then the the yin energy is would be considered a more female energy in nature and it's more attracting. It's more pleasing. It's it feels really good. And so uh, a yin infusion technique is a technique that you can do very simply by sitting in a chair, very similar to the way I'm sitting right now, or you could do it lying down. I like doing meditations either sitting in a chair or lying down. Uh, I also do meditation standing, and there are many different ways that you can do meditations. One thing that I teach when I teach individuals is that I want you to be comfortable with whatever technique we're doing because the way you're going to get this to work for you is by being comfortable and getting your body comfortable and a lot of times meditation uh, some meditation will teach you some type of position that your body is not comfortable with which means your body now has to go from uh, being in a state where it's not comfortable to where you have to actually get it relaxed and then you have to actually see if the technique will work so anyway I want you to be as relaxed as possible and sitting in a chair almost everyone can do that if you can't do that, lie down on a bed or on the, on the ground and you just want to relax your body down. The yin infusion technique is designed so that you can bring a nice, relaxed energy into your body. And by sitting in a chair, you would feel that energy coming in through your feet from the ground and also through your fingertips. So if you can see on the video, your fingertips, your fingers and your hands are really transmitters of energy. And so you can transmit chi out of it and you can also bring energy in that way. So if you're sitting down in a chair, you would have your hands out like this, bringing in that energy and then bringing it up through your feet and just feeling that energy come into your body. Now if you want to make it more dramatic, as you inhale, you picture the energy riding up your body even stronger than if you're not concentrating on the breath because breath work has a lot to do with energy as well and it's really getting your your state of mind to a state of total relaxation where you feel so pleasant this is the type of technique you could do uh, a five minute break at work you could do it uh, as you arise in the morning you could do it right before you go to bed meditation and techniques like this are designed so that you can integrate them into your lifestyle at any point. It's not necessarily, okay, this is my training time. It's kind of like, hey, I need to do this technique right now. Let's just do it. Sit down five minutes, even two minutes, and do that type of technique. And it's drawing that energy in through the feet and through the hands and just letting it swirl in your body. As you become sensitive to your own energy, you're going to be able to close your eyes and just feel that energy in your body. You're going to feel your fingertips start to pulse. And that's a good thing. You're going to start feeling this pulsing almost in your entire body, feeling this pulse, just like you would feel your, your heartbeat. In fact, as I'm talking to you right now, my hands are throbbing because I'm mentioning it. My mind is so synced up with doing this that it's automatically just feeling that energy just flowing to different parts of my body. And so you just relax into it and you just feel that energy. And then you recognize that sensitivity uh, it's really a great exercise. Once people start doing it, they love it because they'll lie down for five minutes or ten minutes and they'll just start feeling. You could do it for longer too. You could do it for 30 minutes if you want. 
put on some really nice music and you can combine this type of technique with affirmations you could combine it with uh, visualizations for instance things that, that you want to attain through a visual aspect you could do it just to chill out and and just feel good about yourself the biggest thing that I try to teach people is how to feel good because when you feel good you can do miraculous things in your life the other tip is when you make others feel good you can help them to do miraculous things in their life and when you can also help people feel really good they will do things for you as well which is always good well who doesn't want to do miraculous things right I mean, miraculous mm -hmm. events in life this is right I'm, I'm totally on board <laughs> All right, let me take a moment to remind you audience members that by now you should have been to the special offer page. And if you haven't, here's the link to Elle's webpage for this interview, www.alternativewisdomsummit.com. And on this page, look for the special offer link. Um, remember it's in the middle in the box that says details and it's toward the bottom. Click on that special offer link or button now. And on this special offer page you can read all about the exclusive special offers that Al has generously put together with so many marvelous items. Uh, for example, take a look at item number four. Mind Force Attraction Magneto ebook. <laughs> I love that. Remember when Al spoke about how to stop setting goals and start getting them? Wouldn't we all love to do that? Well, this is where you get everything Al has to say about the mind and how to make it work for you in really astonishing ways. So go ahead, take a look, and take advantage of Al's special offer at this exclusive 90% discount. Then click on the Add to Cart button now. The rest is easy. Just fill in the form and click on the Submit Order button. So Al, I have, but we, we, we're running to try and get a few more questions in here. Okay. Sure. You have something called the Manipulation Manual, mm -hmm. and that word manipulation uh, boy, I, 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 I ran into that the first time and I thought, uh-oh, right. and that word can make people, you know, pretty nervous since right. nobody likes to be accused of being manipulative. Right. But you point out that we manipulate all the time, so sure. explain that for us, will you, and, and about the manipulation manual and techniques. Sure. Manipulation manual is the master secrets to covert persuasion and, and hypnotic influence. And I named it that way because it's it's true. I mean, when you are using techniques, uh, even if you're not using techniques, you are looking to manipulate. If you're looking to, uh, anytime you're looking to sell something, anytime you're looking to convince somebody to come to your way of thinking, well, even if it's, hey, you know, why don't you come with me to the ball game tonight? And your friend's a little resistant. Oh, come on, we're going to have such a good time. We'll have a couple drinks. We'll have some food you're manipulating, you're trying to get that person to your way of thinking. Well, manipulation is designed to teach you that control factor that I mentioned when we first started, to become a controller and understand how powerful your mind works. And I teach it from the standpoint of self-hypnosis, self-hypnotic influence, uh, all the way down to if you wanted to influence others. The fact of the matter is, is that we are being influenced all the time commercials are constantly manipulating us if you and I, I tell this to my students all the time if you just really want to test how powerful the laws of suggestion are put yourself in front of the same commercial continuously and you can do that easy online you can go to YouTube probably and find an advertisement of something randoms maybe pick something that you never would buy and I want you to watch it maybe 7, 14, or 21 times and then tell me if you don't have somewhat of a a pull towards it. You know, it's you're kind of attracted to it now because it's been integrated into your mind. It's the same thing with songs. It takes about seven times for you to recognize a song. And if that's just the way life is. And so I wrote the manipulation manual to teach people how to become really good controllers for themselves and also uh, if they wanted to help others. Now obviously controlling others is a is a kind of a sounds very negative however I always look at things from a win-win situation so if Pamela I were to try to convince you to do something with me 
I would only do it if it was a win-win situation in, in your best interest. So it wouldn't be a situation where I'm taking advantage of you. And I think that's really the difference between um, what I talk about in manipulation versus somebody trying to do something just for their own gain without regards for the other person. Well, I think that all of these techniques that you teach, Al, are, it's like, um, it's just like even solar energy or any form of energy, um, it's, it's like many things where you have to be in integrity mm -hmm. with yourself. You have to have a strong moral sense and you have to have a strong moral compass to, to guide yourself and to know how to, how to learn and apply these techniques for the, uh, my, my, my personal mantra is, does this serve the whole of life in the best possible way? And if, if, if your answer to that is yes, then these are wonderful things to be able to, to master. And especially in a time when we, we just, we need to get powerful. We need to know who we are. We need to know what is really, you know, in here, in this complex of amazing gifts and abilities that we've come into when we come into a body which is you know divine mind's greatest gift to us is these the times that we spend in in the body and to learn how to work through this to to become more I believe and more more in touch with our spirit selves and the whole of life and Al has, I was so excited to invite Al with us today because he has so many uh, techniques and really practical methods that you can learn to, 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 to get on this path and move forward with power. So Al, I just, <laughs> I, I have oh, one more quick question. Okay. We're running out of time, but I just am so curious. What is blood washing? I know this comes up too um, in some of the in some of your talks. Right. Blood washing. I've heard that some of the big rock stars do this every year in Switzerland, but I'm sure I'm sure it's not the same. Buddy, the blood washing is is a technique that was developed, designed to move the chi through the body, and it's called blood washing because as you're moving the energy through the body, you're increasing the blood flow and you're increasing the size and density of the nerve fibers in the body and as you increase the size and density of the nerve fibers you're able to obviously create and send a more communicative communicative message to your body by creating these these stronger nerve fibers so you have more energy that can pass through it very similar to a speaker wire the thicker the speaker wire the more energy the more power you can send through it well the same things true with the body as you're increasing the size and density of your nerve fibers and you're increasing the blood flow so that you can your, your blood flows better obviously it's uh, healthy for you because now you're increasing that blood flow uh, in the body and you're moving that that blood uh, through the body and that's essentially what blood washing is the way the way it's uh, the way I talk about it that sounds like a good way to not get Alzheimer's yeah I, I imagine it's probably a good way to stay away from a lot of uh, different diseases. Definitely. That sounds great. All right, Al, this is it. I, I just, we got to stop. I you sure don't have one more. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> I know. I, well, listen, we could go all day because I'm so fascinated by these things. And I wish we could have gone into more detail, but there's always a next time. That's right. So, I, and I do still have so many things I'd like to ask you, but I have to give some important information for our audience. All right, friends, this is how you, this is really great. This is how you get your free thank you gift. You need to be on Elle's webpage. In case you haven't seen this page yet, it's located at www.alternativewisdomsummit.com forward slash mind force. And to get to the thank you gift, Click on the special offer link. Remember that's in the box labeled details. And that takes you to the special offer page. Then scroll down and look for the box with the red dotted lines that has the heading Al Perhacks Thank You Gift. Fill in your name, email address, and click the send button. And within moments, we'll automatically send you your link to Al's Thank You Gift. For you that joined this interview late, 
uh, never fear, you, in case you miss some of what we spoke about, we'll be posting the replay in a few minutes and we'll leave it up for 48 hours. If you want to share this free 48-hour replay with a friend, please send them to www.alternativewisdomsummit.com. And also, if you haven't already done so, is this is the time. This is the time to take advantage of Al's fabulous special free offer because this is something you really do need. Take advantage of this exciting and exclusive 90% discount. 90%. And click on the Add to Cart button now. The rest is easy. Just fill in the form and click on the Submit Order button. Friends, thank you for joining me on this interview. And Al... Thank you so much for sharing your fascinating insights and information with us today. You're welcome. I enjoyed uh, every minute of it. Oh, me too. Me too. All right, friends, that's all for now. This is the Alternative Wisdom Summit, and I'm Pamela Davis, sending you blessings and best wishes. Bye-bye.